You mean this whole thing's about some stolen diamond and now it's gone again? I only want what belongs to me. You mean the diamond? Your life and your wife's life mean nothing to me. Now, McIver has my wife and he wants what's in there. I'm gonna get it to him. I don't want to kill you, Mr. Petrocelli, but I will. If you want to shoot, you shoot. What's going on around here? You're under arrest for suspicion of murder. That's okay. Oh, oh, listen, uh, could you pick me up a hamburger when you come back? I'm starving. Okay, I love you too. Goodbye. Can I help you? Is, uh, Mr. Petricelli here? No, but, uh, I expect him back soon. Would it be all right if I waited? Sure. Just have a seat. Thank you. Would you care for some coffee? No. No, thank you. Be all right if I use your telephone? Oh, sure. Just use the one inside. Thank you. Hello? Who's this? Hello. I could do to help you? Uh, well, yes. Uh, I can't wait here any longer. Would you just hang on to this? You can give it to Mr. Petricelli. Ask him to hold it for me. I'll be back to see him tomorrow. All right.
How can you stand not to open it? You say to be in today? That's what the man said. Well, did he say what he wanted? Just uh, hold on to it. Yeah, that's why I can't open it. Yeah, but what about those two men and that car that picked him up? What about them? They probably worked for him. I don't know. It just seems funny to me. Funny? If it happened at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, would it be so funny? I guess not, but it didn't. It happened at night. You know what you've got besides a great face and a great body? What? A great imagination. One's in the family. Would anybody want to do something like this? I don't know why, but it sure looks like they were looking for something. What? I don't know. The question is, did they find what they were looking for? Mr. Petricelli? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, um, spring cleaning. No, 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 we just got here. Um, Miss, uh... Parker, Chris Parker. Oh, this is my wife Maggie, and uh, I'm Tony. I'd, uh, like to offer you some coffee, but I don't think I can find the pot. You don't have any idea who did this? No, I, uh, I wish we did. Uh, now, look, Miss Parker, uh, unless it's really important, we've got a few things to do around here, and, uh... Well, I can see that. I, I just want to ask you something. Yeah? About my father, Ed Parker. He came to see you last night. Last night? Yeah, around 10 o'clock or so. Uh, what does he look like? Well, he's around 50, about um, 5 feet 9, gray hair. That sounds like the man that was here. Well, if he was, uh, he forgot to leave his name and address. Oh, well, that's not really important. He told me that he left something with you, for me. Did he? Yes, he, he, he called me from here and said that he was leaving it. It's funny, uh... No, he didn't leave anything for you. Are you sure? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, well, do you know, do, do you know what it was? Or? No, that's all right. If if he didn't leave it, he, he didn't. Um, well, thank you for your time. No, no, wait a second. I mean, you know, I mean, maybe uh, someone will turn up, you know, through all this mess. Where, where can we reach you? Well, I'm at the Single Tree Inn. Well, uh, one more thing. Did you did you, did you uh, speak to your father about it? Well, I can't. He left town this morning. Well, maybe it's at his house. Well, maybe. Well, look, if there's anything I can do to help you... Uh, uh no. No, thank you. Honey, I, um... I take it back what I said about your imagination. What is this all about? Now, did he make a call from here? Yeah, but, uh, I don't think he talked to anybody. It was like someone answered and then they hung up. Did you see what he was doing when he made the call? Mm -mm. I wonder if he did leave something. You mean besides the envelope? Yeah, and if he did, did they find it when they wrecked the office? Who is they? I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna find out, though. I'm gonna go on the telephone company and see if it was a, uh, a toll call, because if it was, then I'll have the name and address, see? Well, what can I do? I want you to call Pete. Ask him to find out if he... Anything about this uh, Chris Parker and Ed Parker, huh? Okay. Now, when yeah. do we start cleaning up this mess? Well, look, you, my darling, go out and have a little breakfast, huh? When I get back, I'll help you, okay? Oh, get out of here. I'll do it myself. Okay, but no heavy stuff. Actually, I thought I might just dust. <sighs> okay, I'll see you later, babe. <laughs>
Parker. Mr. Parker. Hello? Anybody home? Freeze! Hmm? And what the hell is going on around here? Don't move from right there. You're under arrest for suspicion of murder. Well, it's the dumbest thing I ever heard, isn't it? That's exactly what I was thinking. Now, that's off the record. So, uh, you didn't know him at all, huh? That's right. Well, what were you doing there? I wanted to find out who he was. Why? To see if he, if he knew what everybody was looking for. You don't know? Look, if I would have known, I would have given it to him. Okay, that's it. Yes, sir, I'll type this right up. No hurry. Okay, listen, we know you didn't kill him, but... You, you know, there, there is something really strange about all this. <laughs> what you think is strange is to speak to Maggie. Look, can you get me out of here now? You know, I'm beginning to feel like I need a lawyer. Come on. And, uh, he didn't give you anything? Yeah, he did. At least he gave it to Maggie. What was it? I don't know. I didn't open it. Where is it? It's the desk with the rest of the stuff. Well, let's go get it. If I'd have known you were going to a life of crime, I'd have let you win some of those bets. Great, great. You got his stuff right here. OK, Tony, examine it to make sure it's all there. And then sign for it. OK. Is this it? Rams minus three, Bills minus six. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd think you were gambling. You know, that's a legal search and seizure. Be careful. What's this? More gambling? Hmm? More gambling here? Mr. Petrocelli, the money is for your time. Hmm. L4 to 62, R3 to 41, L2 to 18, R1 to 55. Well, if their rods are pretty long, aren't they? I don't know. Maybe it's a combination of a safe. I could be, but where? I don't know. You find it. I've had enough of this cop business. Now you're being smart. Just stay out of it. If anybody else says anything to you, get in touch with us. Okay. I got a copy. Now, my man, uh, I would like a copy of the death report on Ed Parker. I thought you just told Clifford you'd had enough of this cop business. I'm curious, that's all. I don't know where you got it. Neither do I. Uh, and for that, I'll take 12 in the Ram, Sunday. Mo, the line six. Uh. You're a hard man, Mo, but you got it. Mr. Petrocelli? Yeah, that's right. You gonna tell me you're Ed Parker's brother? Good heavens, no. You have a delightful sense of humor, Mr. Petricelli. Well, um, so I've been told, yeah. Actually, my name is Arnold McIver, and I am interested in Mr. Parker. Well, it's a little late now, you see. He's, uh, he's dead. So I've heard. A great shame. It's, uh, quite warm. Could you get a stroll along with me for a moment, or...? Perhaps I could drop you back at your office, since I see your car isn't here. I think it'd be better if you'd tell me what you want. Excellent. I prefer not to beat around the bush myself. I want what uh, Ed Parker left you. 
Why? Because it's mine. What is it? Let me say that uh, what he left you was a clue to where my property might be. Mr. Petrocelli, I'm not an ungrateful man. I'm willing to pay you quite handsomely for it. You didn't find it? No, no, I didn't. I've already sent you payment for any damage we might have caused. And you didn't kill Parker to find it, huh? Of course not. And who did? The girl, of course. His daughter? Is that what she told you? I can see she did. What is it? I, I don't understand. Why? Mr. Petricelli, this whole thing is none of your affair. I think Parker chose you because your office was open. Now, please, before any harm befalls you, wash your hands of it. Here. That's it. But let me tell you something. There's a guy dead now, and the cop's gonna find out who did it. See, that's not my job. But here's a word of advice to you. You and your friends stay away from me, huh? Well, that harm you talked about is gonna befall you like a ton of bricks. Do you get it? Call me. I couldn't believe it. I'd have to stand in line not to believe it. Maggie, did you hear that? How'd you get out so soon? Well, what'd you hear? Well, I stopped at Parker's to talk to him. The place was filled with police. They said they arrested you. I, I couldn't believe it. I know. Yeah, yeah. What'd you find out, Pete? The name's Ed Parker. He works for the Azteca Airlines. Flew between San Remo and Mexico. He's only been in town for a couple of days. Yeah, that's what the police report said. Look, does the name uh, Arnold McIver mean anything to you? No. Why? Should it? I'd like to find out. Oh, there is one thing, though. Yeah, he doesn't have a daughter. Tony, how'd you know that? A plump little bird told me. As a matter of fact, I gave that plump little bird the contents of the envelope. What was in it? Combination to a safe. And that's it. We are through. None of our business. No more. Finished. Good, huh? You know what my father used to say? They put a nose in our face to keep it out of other people's business, huh? Can't find it. Anthony Petrocelli's office. Who? Ah, uh, just a minute. Psst. Okay. Uh, no, 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 he's here. You tell him yourself. It's, uh, Ed Parker's daughter. She must speak to you. Yeah, hello. The, um, where? Okay. Okay, I'll be there in a half an hour. Right. What about what your father used to say? Well, honey, just because he was my father doesn't mean he was always right. <clears throat> Ever tell you what a terrific job you're doing around here? I appreciate it. Thank you, young lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and Pete, do me a favor. Drop me off at Park. Is my car still there, huh? You, you bet. And then what? Well, while you're at it, you can, uh, you can check into this guy, McIver, huh? Is that the plump bird you were talking about? You got it. See you later. Mr. Petricelli, thank you for coming to meet me. Well, this is uh, really some kind of an office you've got here. Huh? I didn't know where else to meet you. I really need your help. How? Oh, to figure out who you are? You're not his daughter. Well, I had to tell you something. Why? Well, I, I needed what he left you. Well, how do you know he left me anything? 
All I know is when they were chasing Parker, he had it on him. And after he left your office, he didn't. You mean McIver? Mm -hmm. That's right. He says it's his. <laughs> yeah, he would. Is, uh, is that his real name? No, well, it's close enough. Then I guess he's one up on you, isn't he, huh? Look, who are you? It doesn't really matter what my name is. Well, it might. It's Chris Frazier. Look, the whole thing is really very simple. I work for Pacific Western Insurance Company. We insure many things. In this case, a most expensive diamond. It belonged to a man named Morales. We insured it for almost a million dollars. Then it got stolen. By Parker? No, by MacGyver. But he couldn't get it out of Mexico, because there are no real top diamond cutters there. So we contacted Parker to fly it out, huh? To make delivery here. How did you know? Parker got nervous and contacted our office. He said he'd turn it over here for part of the insurance. And MacGyver found out about it, huh? Yeah, he must have. I met Parker about an hour before he showed up at your office. He said that the diamond was safe, that he had it stashed away somewhere, and that he had the key with him. And it's a key. Well, I don't know. It, it might have been a ticket or a claim check or anything. Could it have been a combination to a safe? Maybe, but I don't think so. Anyway, that's how I found out he had it with him. Well, where do we go from here? Well, we have to get to it before MacGyver does. He'll have it cut up and sold as soon as he gets his hands on it. You know, wait a second, lady. You know, I don't understand one thing. Why, why are you doing it this way? Why not the cops or the, or the FBI? Well, it happened in Mexico. They have no jurisdiction. You know, I'm sorry, lady, but I, I get the feeling that um, this is not your bag. Oh, you really are behind the times. Look, my company thinks I can handle it, even if you don't. I'm sorry, all right? Will you accept my apologies? Yeah. OK? Everything all right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Is there anything else you can tell me now? Mm -hmm. Just try to stay away from McIver. He's a killer, Mr. Petticelli. Truly a killer. Great. OK? Can I uh, help you? I thought your husband was an intelligent man. He is. No, no, he's not. He tried to play a game with me by giving me a worthless piece of paper. Tell him the game is over. If he value you at all, he will return what's his mine. Tell him I'll be back. Tell him to have it, or your pretty little face won't be worth looking at. <laughs> Gonna do something about this orange. All I can do is talk to him. You're a lawyer, get a restraining order. I'll do better than that. I'll put him out of business for good. Look, Tony, you stay away from him. This is one mean cookie. You can't touch him, huh? Well, listen, no matter what he's done out of the country, uh, he's not wanted for anything here. Look, Clifford, you're a good cop, but your hands are tied. Now, let me tell you something. I didn't want to get into this. McIver invited me back in, and that's exactly where I'm staying, huh? Hey, Tony! Hey, Pete. Got anything in MacGyver? Yep, he got into town one day before Parker. He rented a big house out towards Skyline. Any connection with this thing? He's what they call a speculator. A speculator? In other words, he doesn't have a regular line of work, huh? That's uh, He's been mixed up in an awful lot of big deals before, but they've never been able to hang anything on him. Yeah. Well, do you know his address? Yep. Well? Tony, how about if I drive you out there? Why not?
got any more of an idea what this is all about? Well, if you can believe what anybody says, it's all about a stolen diamond. All this for one diamond? Worth about a million bucks. A million? That's what the lady said. Holy mackerel. Why would anybody want to wear a diamond worth a million bucks? Well, whatever MacGyver is doing, he's doing it right. Look at that house. Kelly, Mohammed comes to the mountain, in a manner of speaking. Do you have something for me? Yeah, I've got something for you, all right. It's a warning. You're going to hear my wife again. It'll be the last thing you ever do. I only want what belongs to me. You mean the diamond? Perhaps. Well, I understand it belongs to a man by the name of Morales. I am Morales. The diamond is mine. It was stolen from me, but I intend to get it back. And if you stand in my way, so much the worse for you. I gave you what Parker gave me. That stupid combination. It was to my own safe. Just a ploy on Parker's part to delay me while his confederate gets to the diamond. Now, somehow you have the answer. You're going to give it to me. Look, I don't have whatever you're looking for, and I'm getting a little tired of your threats. They haven't started yet. Now look, Makai. <laughs> That's enough. One small victory doesn't win a battle, Mr. Petricelli. I don't think you realize what you're up against. You're a law-abiding citizen. I'm not. Your life and your wife's life mean nothing to me. Police can't touch me. And I know where to reach you. I will. You know what a fat chance is? That's exactly what you've got. Let's get out of here. Look at that. I'm still shaking. Did that get us any place? I don't know, Pete. Got any friends in Mexico? What kind? The kind that can give us some information. Well, I got some. You you want to find out about Morales? Um, MacIver or whatever his name is. Also, if there even is a diamond. All right. You're sure of that? Uh huh. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. <sighs> Goodbye. You all right? Terrific. You know, you look like you know something that I don't. I do. Uh-huh. Such as? Such as Pacific Western Insurance. Uh-uh. Don't tell me. Okay. No, no, no. Please, please. Tell me. All right. Look, they have no such representative as a Miss Chris Frazier. And the diamond? They don't know a thing about it. Oh, boy. Why do I feel like I'm on a merry-go-round? Did you talk to Clifford? And MacIver. What did he have to say? Well, he claims that he's the one the diamond was stolen from. If there is a diamond. You know the envelope he left? Combination? Yeah. Didn't mean a thing. It was a combination to his own safe. Well, what do we do now? Honey, I don't know. I mean, everybody seems to think that he left something here, but, but what? Where? 
Mm. I mean, how can I give them something I don't have? We find it. <laughs> Terrific. We just, we just wrecked the office again. Huh? No, no, no. If he left something here, then it has to be someplace that MacGyver didn't look. Let's, let's go over this again, huh? Starting with exactly what happened that night, huh? Okay. I was sitting at the desk. Going over the books. And he came through the door. And asked if you were here. So, is, uh, is Mr. Petricelli here? I said no, but I expected you back. Then... He sat down in that chair. Yeah. And I asked him if he wanted some coffee. Then? He said no. Then he wanted to know if he could make a phone call. And I said, sure, use the one in your office. He made the call. Mm -hmm. Well, did you see him? No, but I heard him. Okay, then what? Well, then he must have written down that message because he came out and gave it to me. Then if he was in there, then you couldn't see him. That's right. So if he left it then, it had to be in there. Yeah, well, how long was he in here? Well, long enough to make the call and write down that phony message. Do what? Long enough to make the call and write the message down. No, 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 no. That's not what you said. What did I say? No, you said phony message. Now, chances are it's at the airport. You're not going out there by yourself. No, 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 no. Well, do me a favor. Call Pete. Tell him what's happening. Tell him we'll get back to him later. Then call Lieutenant Clifford. Tell him to meet me at the airport in half an hour. Yeah, yeah. Be careful. Yeah, I'll be careful. I'll be careful. Pick up the courtesy phone at the airport desk, please. Mr. Anthony Petricelli. Hello. Mr. Petricelli? I now know everything. Your lovely wife was kind enough to tell me. No harm will come to her if you follow my instructions. What do you want? The contents of the locker. I want you to deliver it to me. Where? There's a large gravel yard in the southwest section of town. It'll be shut down in half an hour. My men will meet you there. Where's Maggie? She'll be there. I want to talk to her. Tony? I'm so sorry. Listen, honey, I just don't worry about anything, do you understand? Don't worry, my baby. 
half an hour, Mr. Petrocelli. Obviously, any attempt to bring the police would put your wife in grave danger. Petrocelli. I don't want to kill you, Mr. Petrocelli, but I will. Move away from there. Look, lady, whoever the hell you are, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell it to you just once, because I'm running out of time. Now, McIver's got my wife, and he wants what's in there, and I'm going to get it to him. And if you want to shoot, you shoot. Because I got nothing to lose. sake of argument now, do you, uh, you want to tell me who you really are? My name is Christina Walker. I work for the Mexican government. I was just trying to recover the stone. Well, I can really appreciate that, Chris. Maybe sometime we'll run into each other again, huh? What are you doing? I'm not letting it out of my sight again. <laughs> you really are something. Look, will you go away? Look, will you just go somewhere? I cannot have you tagging along. You might as well take me with you. Uh -uh, no way. Well, then I'll follow you. OK, come on. Come on, if you're coming, come on. <sighs> Where are we going? To a gravity yard. First, I gotta make a phone call. Don't you think you ought to see if the diamond's in there? Nope. I'm giving him exactly what's in the locker. That's what he gets. What if you don't get it back? Well, that wouldn't be too good. Well, you're going to tell me once and for all what this is all about. A lot of what I told you before is true. OK, what about the rest? Diamond was stolen from a museum in Mexico. It's sort of a national treasure. It's funny. I didn't read about it in the papers. Well, they hushed it up. They didn't want anybody to know. Ah. So McIver stole it. Yes. He gave it to Parker to bring in, huh? That's right. He had some kind of hold on Parker. Anyway, we found out about it, and they sent me and a couple of others up here to try to get it back. Well, where are the others? Well, they're covering different parts of the states. Can you tell me why you've been lying to me all the way along now? Look, I don't have any official status here. If anybody found out who I was, even you, well, the whole thing might have come out in the open. I, I just couldn't take the chance. Look, I'm sorry, Chris, but uh, you can catch up with McIver in your own time. The only thing I'm interested in right now is my wife. I know. I guess she's kind of a lucky lady. I'm lucky. Yeah, I hope so.
Driver? Do you have it? Where's my wife? I'm willing to meet you in the middle. All right. Well, fancy meeting you here. No fancier than you, Mr. MacGyver. Except that I now own the diamond. May I have the diamond? And worth it. If only I were sure that none of you would tell my little secret, I could just leave. But can I trust you? I think not. to run, is there? As I said before, I'm sure you're a law-abiding citizen. There's nothing illegal about arresting the man who tried to kidnap your wife. Arrest? Is that what you had in mind? Eventually. I call a lieutenant. It all started with a diamond stolen from the Mexican Museum. What diamond? Uh, Chris picked it up. Who's Chris? Oh, well, she's, uh... Oh, boy. You mean this whole thing's about some stolen diamond and now it's gone again? Look, never mind. It's all right. Her name is Chris Walker and she works for the Mexican government. Is that what she told you? I can see she did. 
She works for one of the cleverest jewel thieves in the world. Oh, boy. Well, Clifford, the diamond is no longer my problem. I, I don't care if I never see another diamond again, huh? But I want to press charges against these guys for kidnapping my wife and for extortion. And I've got a hunch. If you check out those guns, you'll find the gun that killed Ed Parker. Right now, all I want to do is just take my wife, go home, and get out of here, huh? So thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Pete. And Mr. McIver, I hope you have a very fine time in our local jail. Come on. Mmm, that's terrific. <laughs> here, okay. I'll get it. Hello. Yes, operator, this is the Petrocellis. Uh-huh, he is. Just a minute. Long distance. Long distance? Hold on. Thanks, honey. Uh-huh. Yeah, hello. Well, how you doing? They what? When? You what? Nuh-uh. Absolutely no way. Nope. I told you, absolutely no way, and that's it. That's final, okay? Right. Goodbye. What was that all about? That was Chris, or whatever her name is. And I just got her as she was boarding a plane in New York. Well, what about the diamond? Yeah, well, she had it. Well, what did she want? <laughs> Well, she's uh, going to be coming back to San Remo. They're bringing her back to stand trial. Mm-hmm. And she wants you to defend her. That is it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did you say? What did I say? I said absolutely, under any circumstances, absolutely, positively not. What did you say? Good. Of course, on the other hand, it might be a very interesting case. I do remember when I was in law school, there was, let's say, it was a case of the, uh, the State versus Mackler. It was a jewel robbery, and all the odds were against her, but her attorney put up a really great defense. What happened? It was a classic. Well, she got seven to ten years. <laughs>